Hi, I am Dr. Vidhu Varsha. Today we will discuss fetal therapy. So if you get a question like this in your examination, start with an introduction. Okay. To perform fetal therapy, there are basic guidelines or certain guidelines. So there are certain guidelines. First, natural history of the disease should be partly understood. Second, the condition should be lethal or could result in severe morbidity if not treated in utero. So the condition or the disease could result in severe morbidity if not treated in utero. Third, the fetal intervention should be partly corrective okay so this is the introduction or the uh, certain guidelines for to perform before performing a fetal therapy the fetal therapy can be performed either by medical or by surgical so first we will start on with medical therapies that has been available. So in medical therapy, this involves the administration of the drug. Administration of the drug to the mother and which gets uh, a transplant, I mean uh, which gets passed to transplacental passage to the fetus. Okay. Or directly to the fetus. Directly to the fetus by transamniotic route or by intravascular route or through intraperitoneal route or by the through the mother which gets passed to transplacental passage into fetus okay so now we will go on to the uh, disease which has been treated in utero. First we can give steroid for lung maturation. So we give administration of beta methosome in the dose of 12 mg. 24 hours apart it is given as two doses or you can give dexamethasone at the dose of 6 mg 12 hours apart you have to give totally four doses okay this is first one second fetal Thyroid disorders. Fetal thyroid disorders. It can be both fetal hypothyroidism and fetal thyrotoxicosis. So both can be treated in utero. First we will see with fetal hypothyroidism. This fetal hypothyroidism is mainly due to maternal antithyroid medications. Or it can be through maternal iodine deficiency. So this diagnosis is confirmed by cardiosynthesis and TSH estimation. Cardiosynthesis with 
टी एस एच एस टी मिशन ट्रीटमेंट सो फॉर दिस इज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ लीवोथेरोक्सिन at the dose of 150 to 600 micrograms per week through intraamniotic so it is a levothyroxine administration intraamniotically okay this is for fetal hypothyroidism next for fetal thyrotoxicosis fetal thyrotoxicosis is due to radio iodine ablated maternal graves disease with persistent antibodies this persistent antibodies cross transplacentally to the fetus so treatment for this fetal thyrotoxicosis is administration of propyl thiouracil at the dose of 100 to 600 mg per day it's given to mother okay so for thyro hypothyroidism you give levothyroxine per week intraamniotically while in thyrotoxicosis propyl thiouracil is given per day through mother okay next this is is congenital adrenal hyperplasia sorry sorry so in congenital adrenal hyperplasia you all know we give dexamethasone at the dose of 20 micrograms per kg at 6 to 8 week of gestational age and around 11 to 12 weeks fetal gender and disease status is being confirmed by chorionic villus sampling okay if the fetus is unaffected or it is a male child treatment is stopped if it is a female child or female fetus treatment is continue till the end okay this is for congenital adrenal hyperplasia fourth will go on with cardiac rhythm abnormalities so in cardiac rhythm abnormalities we will start on with tachycardia if the fetus has a sustained tachycardia it can lead to congestive ca- sorry it will lead to congestive heart failure and fetal hydrops which can lead to fetal demise so for this we'll start on with if the fetus has supraventricular tachycardia without hydrops the treatment of choice is digoxin second if the fetus has supraventricular tachycardia with high drops treatment of choice is flicanide if the fetus have atrial flutter with or without high drops the treatment here is sotalol or if this fetus is refractory to any of the treatment you can try with amiodarone 
or combination of the drugs okay this is about uh, fetal with tachycardia or with SVT atrial flutter if the fetus have a bradycardia if the fetus is a congenital bradycardia due to congenital uh, heart block is more refractory to the therapy so in cases if the in case with maternal anti pro or la antibodies you can administer steroid to the mother okay so actually this has shown to halt the progression from second degree hot block to third degree okay so supposing if they are refractory to this therapy you can give IVIG to the mother okay this is for fetal bradycardia next intrauterine fetal blood transfusion actually this is a separate question and a separate topic so we'll cover this in the next video okay next we'll move on to the surgical therapies available so the surgical therapies so what you have to keep in mind before inter to before you intervene a fetus with a surgical therapy you should keep that in mind that the defect is isolated and it is not a part of multiple malformations second fetal MRI or fetal karyotyping or uh, fetal uh, chromosomal microarray or some exam sequencing these are required these are an important prerequisite before you uh, before or prior to the intervention okay so for in surgical therapies it can be an open surgery or through fetoscope or it can be ultrasound guided so through open surgery you can correct the lesions like congenital diaphragmatic hernia second congenital pulmonary airway malformation that is CPAM third sacrococcygeal teratoma and fourth meningo myelosib okay next fetoscope so through fetoscopic approach how do you do so this involves like introduction of a caliber that is a thin uh, endoscopic caliber into the uterine cavity through an abdominal incision okay this is usually performed under a ultrasound guidance so it is a general or regional anesthesia and uterine topoletics are needed for this procedure so here it is a thin caliber endoscope inserted into uterine cavity 
through an abdominal incision okay so prerequisite for this is there should be a gentle or a regional anesthesia and uterine tocolytics so what are the conditions we perform a fetoscopic approach so for a twin to twin transfusion so they perform a laser ablation of communicating vessels so laser ablation of communicating vessels second for congenital diaphragmatic hernia they can do a intratracheal balloon insertion for uh, congenital diaphragmatic hernia so uh, while you do a intratracheal ba balloon insertion it can keep the pulmonary inflated so this leads to pulmonary inflation okay third for amniotic band resection next in the lower urinary tract obstruction that is in uh, posterior urethral valve you can do valvotomy through this fetoscopic approach okay next ultrasound guided through ultrasound guided the many minimally invasive fetal procedures can be conducted so these include for a lower urinary tract obstruction vaseco amniotic stunt can be placed okay or if there is a pleural effusion or uh, cystic lesions in uh, cystic lung lesions you can do a thoracic amniotic shunts third for fetal reduction for for what you do a fetal reduction if the fetus is acardicus acardicus is it's a parasitic twin it is without uh, the heart you, uh, the fetus extracts the other uh, nutrients and blood from the uh, twin so if it is a fetal acardicus you do a fetal reduction procedure through a radio frequency ablation of umbilical cord or you can do a intracardiac you can give an intracardiac uh, potassium chloride administration so intracardiac uh, potassium chloride administration can be given if the if it is a multi chorionic gestations Well, that of radio frequency uh, frequency ablation of umbilical cord can be done for a monochorionic so this is done for monochorionic gestations okay next for cardiac malfunctions fourth one for cardiac malformations ultrasound guided valvuloplasties can be done here okay this is about the fetal therapy tomorrow in, or in the next video i will cover the intrauterine blood uh, fetal blood transfusion so just in a brief i'll tell you so fetal therapy 
So to perform the fetal therapy, you should require these three things. That is, natural history of the disease should be partly understood. The condition could result in a severe morbidity if not treated in utero. The fetal intervention should be partly at least corrective. So we have medical and surgical therapies. Medical therapy examples for lung maturation, we give steroid. Example, beta-methosone or dexamethasone can be given. For fetal thyroid disorders such as fetal hypothyroidism, we can give levothyroxine intraamniotically at the dose of 150 to 600 micrograms per week. For fetal thyrotoxicosis, we give propyl thiouracil to mother at the dose of 100 to 600 milligram per day. In congenital adrenal hyperplasia, we give dexamethasone at from starting from 6th to 8th week of gestation. At 11th to 12th week, we do a chorionic uh, villus sampling to find the fetus gender and the disease status. If it is an unaffected or a male child, we stop the treatment. If it is a female child, we continue the treatment till the end. Next, for the cardiac rhythm abnormalities such as supraventricular tachycardia without, uh, without a high drops, we give digoxin. With high drops, we give flicanide. Atrial flutter with or without high drops, we give sotalol. For refractory uh, cases, we give amiodarone or you can use a combination of the therapy. Next, for fetal bradycardia, if the mother is anti-RO or uh, anti-LA antibodies, if she have, we start on with steroids. Or if it is refractory, you can give IVIG. Sorry. If it is refractory, you can give IVIG. Next, for the surgical therapies. So, to perform the surgical therapy, the defect is, should be an isolated and it is, should not be a part of multiple malformation. You need a fetal MRI, fetal karyotyping or a chromosomal microarray or an exome sequencing as a prerequisites. Okay. Next, the surgical therapies here, open, surgical ther open surgery, fetoscopic approach or can be an ultrasound guided approach. In open surgery, we can, we, it is done for congenital diaphragmatic hernia, congenital pulmonary airway malformations, sacrococcygeal teratoma or myelomeningosis. Fetoscopic approach. How do you do a fetoscopic approach? A thin caliber endoscope is inserted into the uterine cavity through an abdominal insertion. The prerequisite is you give a general or regional anesthesia and uterine tocolytics are needed. First, for twin to twin transfusion, it is a laser ablation of the communicating vessels. For congenital diaphragmatic hernia, we have a fetoscopic approach that is intratracheal balloon insertion by which there will be a pulmonary inflation because the pathophysiology behind congenital diaphragmatic hernia is mainly pulmonary hypoplasia and pulmonary hypertension which leads on to pulmonary hypertension. So you keep an intratracheal balloon insertion for this. Next you can do an amniotic band resection and for lower urinary tract obstruction like posterior atrial valve you can do a valvotomy. Next for ultrasound guided approaches. For lower urinary tract obstruction like uh, you can give a vesicoamniotic shunt. For, uh, <coughs> for draining thoracic collections, you can do a thoracic amniotic shunt. For fetal reductions in fetal acardicus, you can do a radio frequency ablation of umbilical cord if the child is a monochorionic gestation. Or you can do an intracardiac potassium fluoride administration if it is a multichorionic gestation. Fourth, you can do a uh, valvuloplasty for cardiac malformations. Okay, So this is about the fetal therapy. Thank you.